Here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, with Sutton Ottawa Group. And today we've got one of my new friends, I'm going to say. Yes. Yasser Ghazi. He is the Director of Commercial Services at Meridian Bank. Correct. What lately has been sort of the shift for you as far as the, uh, you know, what you've been seeing, the trend, when it comes to new things that are coming in? I think biggest trend and one that we do... And, and we speak about it, at least I know in Meridian very well. We have a new corporate strategy, which is Meridian for Good. And that got introduced by our new uh, CEO. And the whole point of it is uh, we want to make sure that there's intention within everything that we're going to do lending-wise. So we're really going to focus on actually understanding and providing support for indigenous entrepreneurs, for BIPOC entrepreneurs, for you know business, uh, ESG-focused uh, entrepreneurs, which is energy, uh, sorry, environment, social governance. So like, I never knew what that was for a long time. So now that's what I'm telling everybody. So it's one of the things that are like, we want to be purposeful driven. Mm -hmm. And I see an actual push towards that, which I love. Like the biggest switch for me from banking to a credit union, in case you don't know the difference, banking, bankers are, uh, sorry, banks are federally regulated and they're owned by investors. You buy stock, right? It's so usually publicly traded. Yeah. Credit unions are provincially regulated in the province they operate in and they're owned by its members. So I put a dollar in a, in a share account when I open an account. That's it. If I ever leave, I get my dollar back. But it's the intention of everything we do is for our members. It's not for our investors. Because yeah. if you leave, we have no money to lend. So the focus of us is really on who our member base are. And we're trying to make sure that our member base is diverse. We're trying to make sure that the, that the people who have had lower access to are getting access to. And we're putting our money where our mouth is. Like we're sponsoring the immigrant entrepreneurship incubator downtown. Uh, Carla Briones has started that and she did a fantastic job. And we got behind it because we want to help immigrant entrepreneurs. So here's money. Here is, you know, we went actually above and beyond. We said, if you come and you open an account with us, because now you're a member, we're going to get our marketing team to come out, take pictures of you. And you're going to become the new face of immigrant entrepreneurs from Meridian Credit Union. We're mm -hmm. going to invest in you. And we just did that with a photo shoot. So we're really focusing on getting involved with the right groups because the the traditional banking stuff is fine. Yeah. Where we need to invest time and money is into that changing space and ensuring that everybody has access and everybody can access and grow. You know, so it's uh, that's where I see a big shift. I think you'll see it in commercials across the board. I think you'll see it in everything a lot more. I'm starting to see it a lot. In yeah. Commercials, you know, diversity and this and that. Yeah. The one thing I wanted to ask you is uh, when it comes to commercial banking, um, you know, you've been doing this for, for quite some time. What are some of the difficult deals that you've worked on? And again, don't have to mention names yeah, yeah. or anything like that. It's just more of like set the I scenario. No, I'm just kidding. The, um, oh, no. <laughs> Make sure this doesn't air. It's been a lot of difficult deals throughout. I'll tell you this. When I started out in small business, it felt to me that if the business owner did not already have a million bucks and able to afford this on their own, then we wouldn't lend them the money. Mm -hmm. Like it felt that way. It felt like everything had to be so lined up. And I'm like, if they had the money, they wouldn't be coming asking for the money. Correct. Right? So it's like, I didn't understand. If I had a million bucks, I wouldn't be coming to borrow a million bucks. Yeah, or, or asking for a hundred thousand. Like it was never that. Yeah. They're like, I gathered everything that I am. I'm going to invest it in this business. I need help of this much. And we say, okay, you took everything that you have. Yeah, you're investing it in this business. Great. How are you going to pay us? Well, your business is not generating income yet. You already took everything that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take less. Well, we can't lend you more. So which one is it? Like a lot of times it, it felt like that at times. And I get it from a risk standpoint and all that kind of stuff. Don't get me wrong. We're creditors, not investors. So we look at how you're paying us back. That's a big thing that people have to remember. But it's still a, it was still a feeling that I didn't like, yeah. right? So that was a lot of the difficulties were actually in small business, not so much commercial because you're so intertwined with your business. So it's like, do you have a secondary source of repayment? No, I quit my job and I'm starting this business. You don't have another income coming in. Can we get your wife to guarantee you then? Because she has income or your husband? I have the whole family involved. Right? In the business. It yeah. felt that way at times. It's like, I need their firstborn. I need, I need everything involved so that I can feel safe. Don't forget to drop. Yeah. Blood sample. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every week to make sure that you're operating. I need to see that you're sweating every day. Yeah. Like it's, it's one of those things that just felt ridiculous. Those were probably the most difficult deals I've ever done. Or for small business clients. Yeah. On the commercial side, it's um, the revenue chasers are the hardest to bank. What I mean by that is I want to say my business does $17 million. You were profitable when you were making a million. You're losing money at 17. You're willing to spend anything to get that number up. 
but then really with all the expenses, you're not managing your inventory, you're not managing your, your profit margins properly. You're hiring too many people so you could go out and sell, but they're not gener but you're paying them too much mm -hmm. because the market's changing, but you're not generating enough revenue to cover it, yeah. right? There is that sort of like diminishing return at some point that 100%. once they hit that, yeah. it just Yeah, but, but they're also not using their, their sales staff or whatever to their diminishing point. They're just adding them. So they're not getting the most out of all of them. Like if, if I put 20 people to sell one thing that I know two people can, the two people will make more money as they sell it. If I do 20 and I divide it, it's hard to retain. It's hard to do any of that. And Correct. I'm paying them more salary than needed. So anyways, people who can, who are just looking for saying, I have a $20 million business, but you're in the red versus saying I have a $1 million business when I make $200,000 a year after I pay myself. Those, those are the hardest because it's, try to beat sense into someone delusional who can say, but I have a $20 million business. It's like, yes, but you're not making $20 million. You're in the red. You're in the red. <clears throat> so I can't give you money because you can't pay. You've been in the red for a pay. couple of years. Yeah, you can't pay. And then they say, but what are you saying? Like, look how much I've grown by sales year over year. Right, but you haven't managed everything else. Well, let's go back and figure out your operations a little bit exactly. and you know, maybe trim the fat and then come back and we'll talk to you in about a year. Actually, the biggest issue. So like one of the biggest concerns here is that like, Again, the revenue chasers forget everything else. They think their accountant is going to be the one who gives them the advice. The accountant, you hire them to do financial statements and taxes. They're not there to give you advice beyond. Correct. Right? So if you want that advice, you're going to pay for it. So ask for it. Like, come up with a strategy. You know, there's some great companies out there that do that, that have consulting services and so on, like TAG, accounting. I don't know if you know them, but they do stuff like that. You know, uh, Patterson does stuff like that with Sarwar and, and, and his team. So... Either way, though, like, right? So a lot of people don't go that route. And then they think, well, my accountant didn't tell me. I'm literally working with somebody right now where they're telling me, well, my salary should only be X. And I'm like, what do you, like, that's $100,000 more than what you're saying your salary should be. Like, something's not making sense. And I go to the accountant, they're like, oh, yeah, they just, like, use the business bank account for a lot of their personal expenses. So whatever that the, those expenses are, we take it out as salary at the very end. So the client doesn't even know that that's happening. Mm -hmm. But that's how they're capturing it accounting wise. Yeah, no, that's a little weird, but. Right? Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where you ask them that they're very good at what they do, but they don't understand everything else in their business. Oh, well, that's the thing, too. Like, it goes to show there's a classification of accountants, right? Like, it's not just mm -hmm. someone that's, you know, bookkeeping mm -hmm. is one. You know, somebody that's going to do financial statements is a different one. And then someone that's actually going to help you uh, yep. in, a, in a CFO kind of manner. Yeah. It's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Uh, but people don't ask. Right, and they just assume. Yeah. Well, my my accountant did it. Cool. And again, like it, it's it's kind your of accountant is not getting paid as a CFO. No, right. And that's the thing. And and beyond that, your accountant's job most of the time is to try to label things in a way that your tax obligation is low, mm. that you claim not that much money. We could do something about it. That that like let's use the the rule book to help you, so you're not paying too much tax and you're and you're still benefiting from your business. We want you to show as much money as you can to show that you have serviceability, that you could pay the debt. It's a balancing act. It's a balancing act. Yeah. So it's almost like we got to put the two people together in a room. You got to talk it out and you got to plan two years in advance because we look at the last two years. Correct. So it's like how do, where you want to go, how are we going to do it, and how do we work together in the right way? That makes total sense. I think um, the biggest thing that I find a lot of businesses are having issues with is that one yeah. to start is you know, keeping, keeping track of their accounting, keeping track of like what they're – forecasting, future planning, yeah. all of that stuff. The other thing too is, you know, and then this is where like a, a lot of the times I'm like, well, if you're planning on doing this, it's future planning, right? Yeah. Like sitting with a financial advisor or someone like yourselves is like giving them that sort of advice that the business is not today. It's coming, but it's not today. It's coming in two years. Yeah. How do I set up for success? And then in two years when I'm doing it, I'm actually getting there. So um, just I'll ask you, so like you're in real estate, how long do you advise somebody to start their actual process of, I want to buy a house. So we made that. Oh. So you got to choose the house. You got to make sure your income is right for two years, yeah. usually, right? They need, or at least your last year with a with a letter of employment mm -hmm. to ensure. So like, there's a lot more steps and where you're going to get to it. I like that question. I'm completely opposite to a lot of real estate agents out there in the city because I don't look at anything ripe. And what I mean by that is like the client comes to me and says, oh, I'm ready to buy. Like most of my clients are not, I'm ready to buy uh, yeah. or I'm ready to invest in this. Or I'm like, I actually coach them so they can be ready for this. So what I mean by that is like, I'm, 
whenever someone says, hey, I'm, I'm thinking of buying a house in a couple of years, or I'm, I'm thinking of setting up a business, or I'm thinking of uh, doing a, uh, you know, like opening up a retail store, something, whatever yeah. the case may be, I always go with, you know what? Let's sit down and have a coffee. At the end of that coffee, we'll put a plan together, and the plan is going to be, here's what you're going to need to do from A to Z yep. for the next you know, six to eight to 10 months, maybe two years in the future. So when you're ready, you just put your hand up and say, I'm ready. Absolutely. And that's should be what every banker does with yeah. their clients. And I decided on doing that actually day one I joined real estate because for me it was like, okay, I, I know for a fact when I started, there, it's very rare that you're going to get the right ones. Like I said, like yep. the ones that are just like, hey, I'm, I'm ready. Like, unless you're like walking around into open houses and just yeah, yeah. stealing them from yeah. other clients, which I, I would never do. Yeah. But or this it was is the a, COVID years. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, or somebody just like, I got money, I got to burn. Like it's, it's very rare that you're going to find that. Sure. So I decided, you know what, from now on, what's going to happen is anybody, it doesn't matter if you're my client, my friend, whatever, if you're going to say something or like you're thinking about it, don't hesitate to give me a call, talk to me, because at the end of the day, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set you up with a plan. Yep. And if I'm not the right guy, that's not a problem. At least I'll set you up with a plan so when you're ready, you're ready. Yep. And that's it. Or you call me first. Exactly. That's that's my biggest thing is that, you know, a, a lot of bankers, unfortunately, are become order takers, transactional. Correct. That, uh, you're not approved. I'm sorry. Moving on. Not like, here's why you're not approved. Here's what the issues we need to address in the future. We need you to focus on this way. Let's get your account. Let's get everybody on the same team. This is his dream. Here's what we're going to go. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get it done, right? But then I know in two years, I have a pipe that I've built. So I have people that I know will always call me. So it's like taking that extra step. Honestly, that's been the secret to my success. I don't want to sell. You're coming or we're talking about something because you're a business owner and you're going to need that service sooner or later. Yeah. It doesn't have to be today. But if I build it enough and if I show my value to them, where I'm also like, hey, yes, sir, I'm thinking of buying a house. Oh, you should talk to my friend Fatty or you should talk to this lawyer that I know. I'm now a resource. They're always calling me. Exactly. And then with the one day when they're just like, hey, I want to do this, I'm going to be like, I can help you with that. Sure. Like, and that's, it becomes that's easier. The biggest one, actually, I find a lot of the time in commercial, it's not even like they don't even know where to go and ask. Sure. You know what I mean? So it, it the onus goes on the banker, the real estate agent, whatever, to like actually advise them on the yeah. right in the right areas. Yeah. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I'm thankfully successful is because I again I sit down and I just talk to them about the full plan. But you're an engineer background, aren't you? If I remember, or you studied engineering? Started, yeah, started an engineering, engineering background. So for so, me, it's always like, let's build on the future. But that's exactly, but beyond that, it's like there was always a process, mm -hmm. right? Like like engineering will focus so much on that process and the planning, yeah. it won't tell you how to run your business. Correct. So you could, you could destroy your business just trying to come up with an idea or going after that idea, because that's actually your passion. Yeah. You need people around you. Like you gotta think of yourself as Batman always if you're in business and you have the tool belt and the tool belt are your professionals that you choose and that are right for you. 100%. So, yeah. And the other thing too is like being in solution selling for the last 15 years 100%. before I even joined real estate was the reason why I'm the way I am. It's yeah. like, you know, solution selling basically what it is is like, I'm not going to sell you anything unless it makes total sense for your business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every time you meet somebody, we have the 30, 30, 30 kind of thing. And then there's that 10% that will never do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that 30% that you'll meet, there is no reason for them to even do anything with you because yep. there's just not. Uh, enough need yep. to justify that solution. Yep. Not it's not when I say need, I don't necessarily mean just financially. I mean like they just genuinely there's no, no. need yep. for there's your no need services. For yep. There is that other thirty percent that they could need it, but maybe they don't have the budget, they don't have the skills, whatever. That's fine. That's you work on those because one day they become your clients. They're ready. Yeah. And if you're really good at like keeping that relationship and and you know I call it breadcrumbs, giving them what yep. they need. Yep. Um, you know, for example, hey, I just read this article about this particular thing that you were t t chatting about the other day. It's going to help your business in A, Y, Z. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. They come back to you. They keep coming back to you because they know at the end of the day, you're doing it out of the, you know, out of the goodness of your heart. It's not like, you know, for a fact, there's no business yep. coming up. But in five years, maybe there is. Yep. In three years, Their maybe success there is. will equal your success later. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, but those are believe it or not those are your biggest advocates because they will start telling other people yep. that other 30 percent that's ready to buy you know what i'm i would love to do something with them but i'm not there yet i think my company's not you know growth wise love them but this is the yep. guy that you need to talk to man it's it's so true because we even see it in like networking like whenever we were at like the summer soiree or something the amount of people 
thank God that, that came up to me they're like, oh, yeah, sir. Like, so-and-so told me I need to speak to you and, like, I have to meet you. And I was like, oh, thanks. And I'm like, that's nice. But it's also just like it was incredible the amount of people that I met that were new. Exactly. Because of somebody saying I was talking to so-and-so. So, like, being present and being like, you've never met. You should. Like, you he's should. a good guy to One know. One day is going to help you with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so if, if like, he doesn't, at least he, he knows a lot know of people somebody. that's going to help you. Yeah, exactly. I always try to be the guy that knows somebody who can help, right? So it's like, and I do mean it only from, like, selfishly, I know you're going to call me always. So if it's if there's an opportunity for me, I'm going to take it. But unselfishly is also like, I want to help. And I also want to help the people that I know. So I know you, if somebody calls me and being like, do you know any real, you'd be one of the names I'd give. I'd be like, absolutely, I can vouch for them. Why wouldn't I, right? Yeah. And then everybody eats, everybody succeeds, and then it's uh, it's good. And that's the thing with commercial. It's uh, I keep saying this. It's vast. Okay. It's, it is like the wild, wild west when it comes Absolutely. out to commercial. So like, if you don't really know what you're getting into, you could literally walk away with the shirt yeah. off your back. And you have to be. People don't do this. People try to go for. Um, I got approved. No, you, you need to go interview, who you're going to be working with, the bank, and maybe not the bank specifically because all banks kind of offer similar stuff. But like who that person that you're going to be working with is yeah. because they have to be an advocate for you to the bank, not the ones to tell you the bank said, I'm sorry, you're declined or yeah, you're approved because the bank said so. It's like, no, no, here's I'm always going to fight for you and what you want. Mm-hmm. So being that having that advocacy role is super important. And if, and if you're not getting it from your banker, yeah. it's not the right fit. And then the other thing, too, when it comes to bankers, I got no disrespect no, no. here, but it's just that Please the end of the day, it's, uh, <laughs> it's literally like a box. Yeah. If you don't fit in that box because your arm is out here or your leg is sticking out, they're not going to try to, sh- they, they might try to shove you in, but that's uncomfortable for you. Yeah. And if you don't get shoved in, the chances are you're not going to be able to get that loan. How do you talk to somebody? And this is where you guys come in is like, how can I give you the advice that, you know, in two years, maybe your arm is supposed to be in this place instead of like, you know, yeah. so you can actually fit in that box. And not only that. Or just we'll, get a bigger box. Yeah. Or we'll help you, right? Like. I've had situations where I had to be like, yeah, here's why we won't do it. For instance, this guy needed a um, an operating line of credit. He was growing like crazy, plumbing business. And he's like, I just got all these contracts signed with new builders and developers. Holy crap, uh, I need something to help me operate because I can't afford it now with my money. I'm like, okay, what's your receivables look like? And he's like, I don't know, what does that mean? I was like, okay, can we talk to your accountant? So I said, here's what your receivables are, like the definition, here's how they work. Here's our formula. We lend to 75% of like the 30 to 60 day receivables and it, it's a decreasing amount up to 90. Anything later than that, we don't lend against. And your sales and inventory can play a portion of it too. So assuming these numbers, this is all you'd get, 70 grand. He's like, well, I need way more than that. Great. I'm going to talk to a broker I know outside who has like a connection that do a lot of credits for businesses. We'll set you up for that. Once you start seeing the actualization of these things and they're reflected this way, Come to me, we'll refinance it at a lower rate and you'll get it. Mm-hmm. But right now, it's we need to to put a Band-Aid and then we'll sew it together afterwards. Yeah. So let's figure that out. So we did it. I made nothing out of it, but I quarterbacked it and, and like helped teach him and stuff throughout of it. And he still texts me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like- It's the same too for us. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm like, you know what? No, you're not ready for this. Maybe you go. You should go into a rental for now. Yeah. Let me see if I can help you out with that rental. If I can't, there's no problem. Here's a, a property management that can help yeah. you out with it. And when you're ready, here's what we're going to do. Step by step. Yeah. That's on the residential side. Commercial side is even longer. It's a longer process. Another thing, and I hope everybody learns this, and I know you probably already know it, but I hope all other real estate agents do it. Because anybody who dabbles in both or mostly res and dabbles a little bit in commercial forgets that commercial, three months, residential, five days. <laughs> like to, to get to get lending. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not a five day you, or you have to waive it in exactly. 20 days. Exactly. Do not put your client in that where then they have to put more deposits and get be, be realistic. Yeah. I understand we want to get the things closed, but it's like that's they're going to have to put bigger deposits. They're going to have to get an extension. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I've got some that are like, okay, we'll do, uh, for example, for residential, normally most of the time we do like a five day, seven day bus- yeah. uh, you know, business uh, days, conditions. Yeah. But when you're looking at like a, a triplex or you're looking at a, a multiplex or whatever, we're, we're going... 20 days, 25 days sometimes. If you're going anything business. And that's, at this point, they've already been approved. It's yep. just basically checking, making sure that the property lines up with the bank. If we're going anything business, like for example, I've done this other uh, deal, which is basically like they're they're buying an office and doing all of that stuff. And we actually had to do 90 days because there's 100%. also a piece of land involved yep. and we got to check and see if the environmental is okay. Phase and this one, and 
you you may need a phase two you may and the appraisal is going to come and then we're going to sensitize that appraisal and we're going to say we think the value is x yeah yeah it's uh it's a lot more work my my write-up my credit application write-ups are between 35 and 55 pages that's how much analysis is going Mm -hmm. fantastic i could share them with you yeah no i really appreciate it man so there's a lot to talk about as we can see Uh, commercial like i said there's so much to talk about there's so many things that we could bring up we don't have a lot of time unfortunately but we're very graced by your presence. Really appreciate you, Yasser. Thank you. And looking forward to more and more and connecting with you uh, across and, and all the networks and, and what have you. For people that are watching, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button. He's a handsome boy. And then also make sure that if you hit the subscribe and, and hit the bell icon so this way you can get the uh, episodes that we come out. You get alerted about it and at least you know what's coming. Uh, and I normally don't release them all at once. They, they come in in, in chunks. So. If you want to watch this or anything else, just make sure that you hit that subscribe and uh, we'll see you soon. Like and subscribe. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Like and subscribe. Yeah.